Greetings all, and welcome to Blending the Rules. I am your humble DM, Tim. Now, a quick explanation uh, about the, the name here. The reason that this channel is called D&D Blender is because whenever I would create a campaign or a game, I would always grab things from all over the place, be it uh, a theme, a character, um, a rule set, uh, whatever. I'd grab them all, I'd chuck them all in together, I'd mix them all up, and blend them all together. And that would be how I would create my games. And that just sort of became the staple of how I would run uh, run games. But what uh, one of my players suggested would be a good idea, it'd be to show how I've actually done this in, uh, in different ways. So... Hence this series. Uh, and I thought that I would start with one that I have actually seen floating around the internet quite a bit with people asking questions, and that is Spelljammer. Now, for those of you who don't know, Spelljammer is D&D in space. It was uh, one of the previous editions of Dungeons & Dragons, uh, and added on to, I believe it was the uh, In the Forgotten Realms. And what this allowed you to do was that there are these boats, sailing boats, literal sailing boats, that have uh, magical helms attached to them that allow them to travel through space. And there uh, was all different planets, which uh, all the different um, species came from. The Aarakocra and the Lizardmen actually came from one of these planets. Uh, the sun is actually the elemental plane of fire. Uh, there are... Uh, floating uh, fortresses that the uh, the dwarves have created. There are um, elements where the uh, the mind flayers have actually uh, taken over massive uh, swathes of space. Primarily, that's actually where the uh, where the mind flayers came from. If you've seen the introduction to uh, Baldur's Gate three, the space vessel that the um, uh, the Mind Flayer uh, has you captured in in the opening sequence of that game is actually known as a Nautiloid. It's actually a Spelljammer vessel. And, but one of the things that people don't realize is the rules for Spelljammer pretty much already exist in 5th edition. You just need to know where to find them. And so that's what I'm going to do for you now. So if you've ever wanted to do Spelljam or have you know found the older rules but have been curious about how to adapt it to 5th edition, this is going to be the simplest way to do it uh, within the, the confines of uh, 5th edition using rules that already exist to make it simple. So minimal effort on your part. All you really have to do is just follow this quick guide and I will explain where you need to go to find the rules. Now, what makes a Spelljammer vessel a Spelljammer vessel as opposed to just a regular sailing ship? And that's very, very simple. It's one thing. It's what is known as the Spelljammer Helm. A Spelljammer Helm is a magical chair that... Uh, affixes to the uh, the bridge of uh, a, a vessel, and essentially uh, it creates uh, a uh, a pocket of air and an artificial gravity field, as well as allowing the ship to propel itself through space or indeed through the air. Uh, but where do you find such a thing? You might uh, you might ask. Well, you will find such a thing on page. Uh, 297 of the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Um, it is called the Helm of the Scavenger. And I will just read out the basic stats for it here. It is a wondrous legendary item. Uh, re requires attunement uh, by a spellcaster. Uh, this ornate chair is designed to propel and maneuver a ship through space. It's passive properties. The following properties of the helm come into play even when no creature is attuned to it. When placed aboard a vessel weighing between 1 to 100 tons, the helm generates an envelope of fresh air around the ship and while it is in the void of space, but not underwater. This extends out from the edges of the hull in all directions from a distance equal to the length of the vessel's beam. So essentially it's a circle around the ship as long as the ship is, but also wide out. Uh, so the creatures aboard and near the ship can breathe normally in space. The temperature within the air envelope is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. 
in addition, when placed aboard a vessel, da, 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 artif- um, the helm generates an artificial gravity field. While the ship is in the void of space, so that creatures can walk on the ship's deck uh, as they normally would. Creatures and objects that fall overboard bulb in the gravity plane that extends out from the main deck from a distance equal to the length of the vessel's beam. So essentially what that means is that you, uh, when this device is attached to the ship, it sort of creates a imaginary invisible ocean around it using the gravity field. So if you fall overboard, you don't just drift off into the void of space. You bob in the uh, the side of the vessel like you're floating um, on the surface of the water, but the gravity plane is the, the line in which uh, you float. Um, of course, if you extend out past that point, you're in the void of space and you're in trouble. Um, the active properties of it is that you can use the helm to propel the vessel across or through water or other liquids to a maximum speed in miles per hour equal to your highest level unexpended spell slot. So when piloting this vessel, you need to be a magic caster um, if you're attuned to it um, and you need to have uh, unexpended spell slots. Um, you can also use the helm to propel the vessel through air or space at a maximum speed in miles per hour equal to your highest level unexpended spell slot times 10. And provided you have at least one unexpended spell slot, you can steer the vessel, albeit in a somewhat clumsy fashion, in much the same way that oars or a rudder can maneuver a seafaring vessel. So you can just pilot it by concentrating while you're in your chair. And uh, whenever you like, you can see what's happening on and around the vessel as though you were standing on a location of your choice aboard the deck. The drawback, of course, is that while you are attuned to the helm, you cannot expend your own spell slots. So, again, this is a a rule that already exists. This rule is official Wizards of the Coast rules from the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, and so all you need to do if you want to create yourself a spell jamming vessel legally inside D&D is have yourself one of these helms attached to a regular boat and you're good to go. So that's it for the rules on uh, how you can actually get a spell jammer to work. But what about the rules for the ships? Well, fortunately, uh, if you go to Appendix A of the Ghost of Saltmarsh, it has all the boats there for you. You will find rules for uh, the galley, a keelboat, longships, rowboats, sailing ships, and warships, as well as rules for managing crew, as well as crew disputes, potential mutinies, upgrades, special weapons, and other bits and pieces. It's all there in the Ghost of Saltmarsh, so that's already sorted out for you. But in order to make this uh, a lot simpler, uh, another location you can also find uh, a ship is right back in to uh, the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. On level 19 of the dungeon, there is a section called the Caverns of Ooze, where you will find the ship that goes with the helm that is also in this book, the ship known as the Scavenger. Now, the Scavenger is a uh, Mind Flayer vessel. It's actually uh, piloted, or captained, I should say, by a um, a rather duplicitous um, pirate captain known as Captain Nagathrod, who uh, has been trapped here ever since Halister stuck him uh, inside uh, the... Uh, inside Undermountain, and uh, has been slowly eating the brains of his crew and is going starving and wants um, basically to eat the, the brains of uh, the adventurers when you come uh, come upon him. But regardless, uh, it has a setup for uh, the scavenger right there. So you take the scavenger uh, helm from later on in the campaign, stick it onto the scavenger, and you have a functional spell jamming vessel. And if anyone has been playing the Dungeon of the Mad Mage and has had this happening, well then, this is how you would uh, continue onwards. So all you need to do is to take uh, the rules from uh, Salt Marsh. What I would recommend for using uh, for the scavenger is the rules for a long ship. Uh, but remove the oars um, and keep the sail, of course, because you can always make um, allowances for whenever the vessel is not being piloted by 
uh, a person inside the helm, you can still use like solar winds to uh, to keep the, the ship uh, propelled. So keep the sails, just remove the oars, because there's no point rowing in space, that's never going to work. And because the scavenger has four ballistas as well as a, uh, a ram on the front, just do uh, add that to there. And if you have a look over here, this vessel here is actually uh, representative of what the scavenger is in terms of a model. For those of you that have not seen this before, this is uh, my Spelljammer model that I built um, for uh, a campaign. Uh, so as you can see, um, four ballista points, the ram on the front, and of course it has the solar sails uh, that it is piloted by a... Uh, for when it's not being piloted by the Spelljammer helm. So, there you go. So, very, very quick and easy. So, once you've got that, then you need to know places to go and how gravity will work. Well, once again, Dungeon of the Mad Mage to the rescue. In uh, level, so on level 16 of uh, the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, there is the Crystal Labyrinth and the Star Dock. Now, the Gith Yankai, or the Gith Yankee, however you want to pronounce it, um, are a race of, um, essentially they are aliens, just like the Mind Flayers are aliens, because they come from the, the Spelljammer uh, universe. They um, fought off the, um, the Mind Flayers and have been in a constant war against them ever since, uh, making their um, you know, bargains with Tiamat to be out of pilots, uh, to, uh, yeah, pilot ride dragons and all and all that that bits pieces. But where they got their beginnings was in Spelljammer. So on level sixteen of um, the uh, the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, you actually come across a, a section and a gate which puts you into an orbiting space station that is controlled by the Gith Yankai, and it has all the rules there for moving in low gravity as well as how uh, the gravity planes actually function. It actually has, if you look up here as an example, it actually has the the line of where the gravity pulls everything into the center. So you actually have people going upside down and above. And because this actually functions very much the same way as a spell jammer vessel does, uh, the exterior of this asteroid actually has an atmosphere attached to it. So that's why you've got the dragons flying around in space, but they can only fly out as far as the asteroid is long, just like how a, a spell jammer... Uh, oxygen field can only uh, work as uh, as wide as the ship is long. But that's all you really need. And then once you have all these basic uh, setups, then all it's left is your imagination. You have an entire solar system out there or even other dimensions that you can go visiting with your Spelljammer vessels. Or even so, you could just leave it and have... Uh, yeah, you know, space pirates going in and out of the the lanes between the moons and all of the asteroids of of Salune. So there's just really once you get all of the the basic rules, it's just down to whatever your imagination desires in order to allow you to play Spelljammer. But there it is. So. Like I say, just to relist those books, all you all you need to get a hold of is the Dungeon of the Mad Mage and the Ghost of Saltmarsh, and they have all the rules to basically uh, create your own spelljammer vessels. And then once you've got that, you can just use your imagination and away you go to create your own uh, space adventures. What I would even recommend, if you really wanted to uh, get creative with it, with it, is just take Ghost of Saltmarsh throw the spell jammer element into it and rather than having like the islands and all the different locations that you're sailing around to put it in space because you know with a little bit of tweaking it really would not be that difficult to turn the ghost of salt marsh into say the gold the uh the ghost of the salt marsh nebula i will leave that to uh your imaginations but for now Thank you all very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I have been your humble DM, Tim. And for all you people out there, remember to keep on blending. Bye!